So quarantine has got me pretty bored. There are, after all, only so many Adam Sandler movies you can watch. And I got to thinking, you know what, it's about time that I make another website. The last one didn't go so well, but who cares, I've learned a lot since then. So one day while I was studying for AP exams, I remembered a project I left a while ago where I was trying to perform sentiment analysis on US congressperson tweets. For those of you who don't know, sentiment analysis is basically where you take a text and then try to make inferences on that text, for instance, how positive or negative the words on that text are, just basic stuff like that. But that got me thinking, what if you could look at a text and see what that person meant, what that person wanted to convey, or what the AI thought that they were trying to convey? What if you could perform sentiment analysis on a given text and find out what that person really meant, what that person senti meant. Like what if a user could input a text and find info on the text political leaning and overall mood? I looked around on the internet for a bit and couldn't find any easy tool to do this. And just like that, I was off. Luckily, I had a lot of code and research saved to help my development. I wanted sentiment to have three main models, a simple positive, negative, neutral predictor, a political affiliation predictor, and a mood detection model. I started with the simple sentiment predictor first. This I knew would be easiest because we were basically just predicting if a text was positive, negative, or neutral. Because I wanted the model to work on all types of potential text, I avoided using a neural network that would be biased on a data set. For instance, if I just wanted to train on movie reviews or tweets, my model might not work well on new data inputted from other sources. Because of this, I decided to use a lexiconal approach. Basically, each English word is giving a score on how positive or negative it is, with the middle score representing a neutral word. Words like the would be giving a neutral score, while words like bad would be giving a negative score. Then, the model adds up all the scores from each word for a total view of how positive, negative, or neutral the text is. This was very easy to implement and not computationally intensive at all. Next, I started working on political affiliation detection. This would turn out to be the hardest and ultimately least accurate part of sentiment. I found some research papers and reached out to one of the authors of a project that predicted political affiliation in tweets. The author responded and we had a really nice Zoom chat about the code in my project. So with some help, I was able to retrain the model with a Twitter dataset of conservative and liberally labeled tweets. Note that the dataset was from the US political spectrum, so it works best at detecting political affiliation on text related to politics in the United States as opposed to other countries. Miscellaneous text usually resulted in a 50-50 split between liberal and conservative, but sometimes you could trick the model into leaning left or right pretty significantly. I was a bit nervous that a Twitter-based dataset would make my model only work on Twitter data, but by doing a few things, I managed to make the model consistent on all data. Albeit the model was less accurate on the training data, but that was to be expected. Either way, the model worked, so I was off to the next model, emotion detection. Luckily, I found some code and a data set for six different emotions, being anger, sadness, surprise, joy, fear, and love, which are represented by emojis on sentiment. With some tweaking and modification, I got the model trained and implemented it into the sentiment website. Upon playing with some text examples, I realized that a lot of the time, I can't even predict the emotion of an author writing a given text. According to the model, however, whenever I was stumped about what a person was thinking, it usually defaulted to them being angry, which means that either my model is pessimistic or I'm really bad at picking up on aggression. Either way, at this point, any functionality added to the site usually resulted in a timeout error on Heroku, which is what I'm using to host the website. I only have so much processing power on a free server, and I don't feel like learning how to increase the amount of processes I could do. And so just like that, my NLP website is now running. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the site. You can click uh, down below for the GitHub link and see all the code how I trained each model, and um, also you can visit the site itself. Basically, if you go to sentiment.herokuapp.com, it's going to take you to the website, and you see I tried to make it as simple as possible. Basically, we just have a box that we can use to paste in text, and we also have um, down here where you have links to the GitHub, a little about page, and then the contact form if you want to make 
any suggestions to the site. Basically, if we paste the text in here, um, this is an article from CNN that I have pasted, and then press the submit button. Um, usually it takes a while for it to process uh, a little under 30 seconds, which is the max timeout for Heroku. A few moments later. And now that you see that it's loaded, you can see it says results for submitted text. You can see the text that you submitted. It gives you an overall sentiment analysis, so the amount of neutral words, positive and negative words. Also political affiliation. So you can see that this text is very heavily liberal and that's probably because it's a article talking about police brutality. And then in the emotion detection you see it's mostly angry with a little bit of fear and sadness. As always, at this point the site is fairly developmental and detecting things like political bias on any given text with any model is a rather difficult task. If you guys have any features, suggestions, bugs, or anything like that, you can tell me by either leaving a comment down below or by clicking a link that I have on my website. With that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know if I should monetize this site so I can buy more compute power and add more features. I spent a lot of time developing it instead of studying for AP exams, so hopefully that works out okay. I was thinking about making a model that detects hate speech, and there's a Kaggle set perfect for that task. But yeah, guys, that's pretty much it for this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Thank you guys so much for making it to the end of this video. As always, if you enjoyed it, make sure to hit that like button. Also, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns about what we did in this video, please leave them down below. Now, if I could have just one more minute of your time, I would like to tell you about a service that I've been using for over a year now called Scribd. Now, just as a side note, Scribd did not sponsor me to make this video. I just wanted to tell you about it. Put simply, Scribd is a lot like Audible, except for instead of being $15 a month, it's only nine. And instead of only having two audiobooks per month, you get an unlimited access to a plethora of audiobooks, eBooks, documents, and even sheet music and magazines. So for me, this was obviously a no brainer. And right now, if you use the link in the description, you get 60 days free of Scribd and I get one month if you sign up using my link. So that's why Scribd didn't officially sponsor this video. I'm just telling you about it so that I can get some free months and I can continue learning and you can also continue learning with your 60 day free trial. So thank you guys so much for making it to the end of this video and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.